Welcome back, America. Just last year, Oklahoma's Republican Governor Kevin Stitt created shockwaves across this country by signing into law a major anti-ESG bill called the Energy Discrimination Elimination Act of 2022. A lot of states are now looking to model after this. This act requires the state of Oklahoma to disassociate from any financial organizations that boycott the energy industry. Now, more than 150 financial institutions have been called into question by the state treasury. And we are lucky enough now to continue our conversation with the governor himself. Governor State, great to have you back on the show. Hey, great to be with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a great honor. You know, our founding fathers always intended the states to be the laboratories where the great ideas are born. Oklahoma is doing so many extraordinary things that other people are now trying to replicate. Tell us a little bit about the history of how this law came about and why you signed it. Yeah, well, you know, first off, uh, I also think that our founders never envisioned politics or politicians to be like a profession. And so they thought you'd be a successful business person, farmer or rancher, and you'd leave that to go serve your state or your country. And that's what I did. I never ran for office until 2018. I was in the business world. So the way I approach stuff is really just common sense and protecting our assets, our way of life in the state of Oklahoma. So specifically on this, uh, uh, this energy discrimination elimination act that we signed, it just made no sense. Uh, you're kind of breaking down the free market principles that we believe in, capitalism. And if I'm supposed to be protecting my pension plans, we have billions and billions of dollars that are protecting public employees, my teachers, my police, my firefighters. Why in the world would I allow those investments to be done uh, when the shareholder value wasn't the main objective for those investments. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, it's the other parts of the country that we're kind of scratching our head thinking, what in the world are they doing? Yeah, well, now a lot of the other parts of the country are looking at Oklahoma saying, we want to do what you did. Um, what's been the reaction in the industry and also from some of your uh, fellow governors? There's been, uh, I'd love to know how the industry has reacted, particularly the financial industries. Well, you know, the other governors, we're actually talking about this at the Republican Governors Association. Uh, we had forums about it. Uh, I've met with all of my colleagues around the country, and we're, we're frustrated. We believe that we should protect our pension plans. And a couple of things kind of getting in the weeds, what happens is we normally uh, are just releasing those proxy votes uh, to the large hedge funds, and then they're putting undue pressure, pushing their agenda and their ideology uh, for board seats, et cetera, and more of a check the box social governance thing instead of maximizing shareholder values and picking the best people to run these boards. So that's one of the one of the thoughts we have is, listen, let's make sure that we don't just turn over all of our votes because we're the ones that we band together um, 20, sta 20 Republican states that are like minded in our thought process. We really can push back on this narrative. Uh, and then if we also just stop investing in the Black Rocks and those companies that are are pushing those, uh, you know, weird ideologies uh, on the American public, we really can grab back a hold of this. And, and, and I also, in our bill, we said we're not going to do business as a state with companies that discriminate against our way of life. And, for example, the oil and gas industry. Oklahoma has a great energy story. We're, we're, we're one of only four states that over 50% of our electricity is generated from renewables, but we have an honest conversation about it. And if you want to have a reliable, affordable energy grid, you have to talk about oil and natural gas. Uh, and we're not afraid of talking about wind either, but let's have an honest conversation that we need oil and natural gas for national security purposes for a reliable energy grid. Yeah, that's such an important point. I think those who have uh, jumped on the ESG bandwagon, have uh, sold the American people a really false story that somehow we're going to flip a switch tomorrow and everyone's going to be on electric and fossil fuels and nuclear won't need to be had. We're not even remotely close to that. The grid's not close to that. Electric cars aren't close to that. We don't have the battery capability for so many cars. I think Ford just pulled back on one of its product lines because they can't get the batteries in the, uh, in the way they need it. Uh, and then we also have all of the plastics and other things that are going to continue to rely on the great energy uh, industry of America. That false narrative that there's some utopian immediate future in front of us, it needs to be re-educated, right? Americans need to understand that is a long way off, isn't it? Oh, 100%. And, and, and that's what I, I try to educate young people. When you flip your light switch on or you plug in your electric vehicle, 
what, where does that electricity generation come from? And in Oklahoma, for example, 40% of it comes from wind. And we're so excited that we have a lot of wind energy and 50% of it comes from natural gas. And then we have some hydrogen. We're leaning into uh, hydrogen pretty heavily in Oklahoma. We have some hydro dams. So we have an all of the above approach. And what I've been trying to tell uh, Americans is that we need more of everything uh, to be reliable. Let's let the free market flourish. Take your foot off the brake a little bit. This administration is, is stopping leasing. They're uh, you know, putting their thumb on the scale and that's causing higher prices uh, electricity wise and it's causing higher prices at the uh, fuel pump and it's these policies uh, that are choking off supply and causing the prices go up on the American people and who gets hurt the worst people on the lower income brackets that spend a higher percentage of their income on electricity costs to, to heat their homes and their businesses and uh, drive their kids to school um, those are the ones that they're hurting that's what I try to explain to people free market principles are better for the middle class and they're better for uh, upward mobility. The American dream is alive and well in Oklahoma because we have common sense and we're talking about, hey, we should have a level playing field. Let's let the free market go solve some of these problems. Yeah, such an important uh, concept. And it's, history has proven time and again, free market takes care of the middle class better than a government manipulated market. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your own energy industry because uh, when we had that moment of energy independence under the Trump administration, Oklahoma was at the forefront of that energy produ uh, pro uh, productivity every day. 6%, I think, of your state workforce is in the energy industry. 2% of it is you know, national average. So you're three times larger than most states in terms of energy production and workforce. ESG wants to stamp that out. Talk about the hard, er, hard working Americans who would lose jobs the way the ESG movement is trying to push things. Oh, absolutely. I mean, our number one industry is our energy industry here in Oklahoma. Uh, we're the number six oil producer in the country, number five natural gas producer, and number two wind energy production. Uh, so we have, we have some great workers. We've been an innovative state for over 100 years. Um, and, and so it is very, very important to our economy. Uh, but more importantly, we're a net exporter. We produce 70% um, more energy than we consume. And so we net export that to other states. Uh, compare us to California, who is a net importer. They're actually having to import their electricity uh, because of their policies. And again, uh, when you put your thumb on the scale and you try to do more government intervention, it causes prices to go up. It disrupts the workforce. Uh, but this, you know, sometimes the other side doesn't seem to care about the middle class. And that's what's so frustrating uh, is, is it's our policies that would actually benefit more Americans. And their policies only want to benefit um, the large corporations that actually can withstand uh, more, more government re regulation. And so I, I see it time and time again. It's the big companies that are helping push this, right policies, and uh, the middle class, again, gets squeezed. Yeah, such an amazing dynamic. And you mentioned California, which is the ESG utopia. Uh, Double-digit electrical rate increases for several years now, and occasionally rolling bl uh, brownouts and blackouts. Not the way most Americans want to spend their future life in America. Real quickly, Governor, we've got about 45 seconds left. Other states have looked at uh, what Oklahoma's done, so I want to do that, too. What's your best advice if they're heading down that track now? What's the best advice you could give them from the experience that you had in your great state? Yeah, well, I would say get with their legislature and get their state treasurers and all their pension plans. Because when you look at the amount of money that a, Oklahoma has 4 million people, we're the 28th largest state population-wise, and we've got 10, 10, over $10 billion in our pension fund. So when you add that up, it is a real amount of money that we can band together and create a coalition that pushes back on, on the proxy voting, uh, not turning those over to some of those, uh, uh, some of those uh, you know, huge investment houses. So that's one thing that we can do, uh, but the state treasurers, the pension funds really need to be educated on what's happening and they're violating their fiduciary responsibility to protect the, uh, the assets of our funds. And I think that's, a, that, that's just a, a very simple way that they can put all the people in the room and explain what's happening uh, all across uh, the country. And let's take back control of our money that we have a 
a duty to protect our citizens for. The power of the purse. It's always a, a very potent political force in, the, in America. Governor, I know so many people around this country are watching everything you're doing and applauding. Thanks so much for joining us today and giving us some good common sense and some good free market ideas. All right, folks, we're going to hit the commercial break real quickly. But when we come back, our next guest is one you won't want to miss. Uh, but before the commercial break, take a quick look at an informational message from our great sponsors and partners tonight, Heritage Action for America. Take a look at this. Hey, I'm Brian. My pronouns are he, his, him. I understand you're looking for a small business loan, but you're having troubles with your ESG score. I was denied. What's your business? I operate uh, drilling equipment, oil and gas. Uh -huh. The E in ESG is for environmental. You're in a dirty industry. So I can't get no loan? Well, let's take a look at your company's social policies. Tell me about your plan to create social justice. Social justice. Do your employees get paid time off for abortions? And tell me about your diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. Well, I ain't got none of that. I'm a driller. I just hire good people to do the work. Well, maybe there's one more thing we can check. Do you have any female co-owners? Uh, no, just me. Ooh, have you ever identified as a woman? Or even just non-binary? It could really help your score. What? Ugh, your loan is denied. Come back when you fix your ESG score.